every 10 Australians have some unique creative skill. The art are also a great source of pride for Australians. Now you must be thinking why I'm telling you all this. Because today we have with us an Australian couple who are not only master painters, but rather they are a true source of inspiration to the whole watercolor world. I welcome you, David, sir, and Dinah, ma'am. Hello, David, sir, and Dinah, ma'am. Thank you. Now it's great to be here. Sir, you're very well known for your teachings and services to the art. I want to start this session with uh, going to know about your past. I want to know a little about your background, how and when did you actually start painting? <laughs> I think I started painting when I was uh, very, very tiny uh, because I was actually inspired by things around me. And so pencils were handy and useful. So when I uh, saw them, I thought, oh, I want to draw that. Uh, so I was probably in my early school days, um, probably five or six years old when I was uh, really drawing aeroplanes, all sorts of uh, wow. interesting for children, particularly boys, I think, cars, all those things that uh, were special. And then uh, things that happened, like going to the dentist, you know, my, uh, I had to go to the dentist. So I started drawing a uh, subject of my teeth getting drilled. Oh. You, know, oh, that's really uh, you know, things that really impressed me. So I think it started a long way back, yeah. And, wow. uh, so, you know, uh, I guess uh, the creative part of me, I enjoyed very much and it stayed with me for a long time and it's still there and, uh, and I still have that child within me. Oh. Yes. And, and when, what, what about you, Dinah, ma'am? Uh, how you start your art? Here? Well, I was like David. I started when I was very young. Wow. I had a great passion for horses and I drew horses all over my school books. Wow. I love dogs, so all my drawings were of animals. Oh, wow. <laughs> And I was probably, you know, six or seven, and I kept doing that for many years. Oh, okay. yeah. wow, wow, wow. That's great. What inspired you to become a painter and what made you dedicated to watercolour medium for so many years? Yes. Um, well, what inspired me to become a painter? I had, um, I was actually married at 18 and a different life to now. And I had four children and oh. I always knew... A gift. I always knew God had a gift for me, but I actually didn't know what it was. And I guess I had to have my four children before he was going to reveal that. And I was living with my parents and I was running a big restaurant with my brother and I used to drive to work through beautiful countryside. And one morning, the whole countryside morphed into this painting and I had to stop my car. And this voice said to me, you are an artist. And oh. I said, thank God. And that's when it all started. <laughs> wow. That's great. <laughs> so inspiring. And, 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 and what, what, yeah. the next week. <laughs> oh. and, and what about you, David, sir? How you start? Well, uh, my school days had a big influence on my art as well. So uh, mm. I have to say that... Um, I used to, uh, as I was growing up, draw things around me that inspired me, even to the point of, uh, as I was getting closer to the uh, teen years, I was drawing all the beautiful girls in my class <laughs> and uh, getting my back. So um, uh, I think uh, that was interesting, but, my, <laughs> but, but part of the um, process of that, I, I never forgot the time when I met this lovely young girl uh, and I drew a picture of Lassie, the dog oh. Lassie, which she put under a pillow. I was 12, <laughs> so oh. I can still, but uh, you know, I, I think um, when things were tough, when, thing, when, when I was struggling with school, uh, if I had struggles, uh, I would fall back into my painting, which was like a, a breath of air. 
So uh, it, it inspired me to, uh, to say, well, there's the safety valve. I know this is what I want to do. Okay. And, uh, of course, uh, parents have a different idea. They say, oh, why don't you take up a profession that uh, uh, pays well or does that? Um, but I wanted to subsidize, subsidize that. I, I felt uh, if I could get into something that maybe had a little bit of a uh, similarity to art, uh, mm. That would work. And so what I did was I, I, I became an apprentice in, in a uh, photo engraving firm, uh, Graphic Arts, and I went oh. to Graphic Arts School. And uh, I learned all the things that some of the masters that we hear of in the past uh, have mm. done, like Jura, you know, like etching, engraving. Um, and you you had to actually do things very accurately for reproduction. So I was using exactly. Right. Yeah. So uh, I guess uh, by doing that, I also tried my skills with uh, with the printing inks and painting on plates and doing all sorts of interesting studies. Um, mm. And I, eventually, I suppose um, I wanted to get involved in in painting in reality. So when I, when I started to do that, I just, every time I worked in that field, I spent time on the train because I worked shift hours uh, studying everything I could about art and painting and particularly watercolour. And uh, I thought, well, to be a good painter, you had to go out and do it, you know. So I had an old car and I used to drive around the streets of where I lived and paint on the side of the road. Pull up the boot, paint, take out my gear and paint on the side. Because I believe that nature's the teacher, you know, and I uh, still to this yeah, day yeah. believe it. So uh, once I started doing that, um, I never stopped. I never, I always felt that um, it was important for me to do this, um, but I started to write down my details of what I was doing. And when I did that, I started to say, well, I've done that, I've done this, um, and some people wanted to buy these pieces. And uh, I thought, would you teach it? People said to me, would you teach this? I thought, well, maybe I should. Um, I like to share my love and interest. And um, I think to this day, like Guy was saying, you know, how, how much uh, inspiration comes from great sources. Um, I think I was led yeah. to, to do that, you know. Yeah, sure you and uh, so, um, in a sense, uh, you know, the similar similarities are there. And, uh, and I think that to this day, I still love seeing uh, people being able to get the inspiration and love that we get from mm. yourself, yourself mm. uh, also. Yeah. You're doing yeah, thing. See, yeah. So it's wonderful to share this. And uh, I hope everybody else um, feels that way too because success is not marked by, you know, uh, how you've sure. got to be better, better. It's marked by your, your love and inspiration of what you feel, you know. Yes. Right, right, right. And... Uh... So when did you actually met Diana and how did your story start it? <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Um, Diana, um, look, I, I went through a marriage uh, and uh, which, which um, I had children and uh, I guess um, it was, uh, it's always upsetting when you go through those situations. But I, I, at one particular time, because Diana ran a wonderful restaurant, and, uh, oh, yeah. and uh, I went to this restaurant to find out if she'd take class students for meals. And oh. um, then, ex then ex spoke to us about <laughs> that she loved art and uh, she was involved in painting. And she, um, uh, yeah, I didn't realise she, she knew what I was doing. <laughs> oh. But anyway, she, she, uh, she came to my classes at the Victorian Artists Society because... They said, oh, if you want to learn some watercolour, come along to, to my class. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, Di was an extremely good oil painter. I learned from a very, very good 
uh, two very good teachers. Uh, and so she was a great student. Uh, and so uh, our friendship grew from there. Uh, and uh, eventually we went out and painted together. And, uh, you know, we shared, shared our interest and love and passion. And uh, I, 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 so much so that it was quite amazing to see Di over all these years because she was a strong oil painter. Um, suddenly now, almost to the point of now, uh, she hardly <laughs> touches the oil. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, you know, like, to me, it's such a creative, inspirational medium to paint on location, you know, because it's got right. this vari variable way of working. So I think I really got right into that. She probably want to say something there. Well, yes, when I, <laughs> yeah, sure. well, an oil painter for 20 years and I'd had a lot of success with that. But when David and I met, it was really tricky for me because I, I wanted to paint watercolour, but because he was such an amazing artist, I didn't want to lose my own individuality as, a, as an artist. And so for a long time, I kept painting my oil painting, but I painted watercolour as well. <laughs> Used yeah. to always say, well, you know, I'm, <laughs> I, I didn't play that up too much. And as we travel around the world for the last 25 years, mm. it's almost impossible to take oil painting. So I always took watercolour. And I just guess I fell in love with it to the point now where I, I paint almost always watercolour. And I've had some really great successes over the last 10 years. So, yeah. 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 Exactly. Your, your, your works are beautiful. Like, yes, we, looking. we all love your works. Of course, David Sir is great, but I love your works too. <laughs> but, so, it's really sure. important to my own voice as a watercolorist and, and not, you know, we had to be different. But because we travel around the world together, obviously we're painting subjects that are similar. Exactly. But I right. never paint the same subject as David always a different subject yes, because yes, yes. it's not going to be good if we're both doing the same thing right right absolutely yeah, right yeah. because our case is also same you know we both are artists she was my student and you're actually almost similar, <laughs> similar you know story. so i am thinking of that you know <laughs> and um, we are also traveling and painting and so she's doing the different subjects now and she's doing more floral well, I can understand that. Yes, definitely. We but saw you're your doing content. very things, Mega, because you're doing your beautiful floral work. Exactly. Yeah, but not only. But you do other things as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, exactly. again, uh, I must uh, concur that, you know, you're doing, both of you are doing wonderful work. And uh, so it's so great to be here and to share it not only with the people around us, but also yourselves who, who do it. Really, amazing. really thanks, sir. Really thanks yeah, because, because yeah. you are saying it's a big thing for me. Yeah, it's, it's a dream come <laughs> true. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so yeah. now you can ask more questions. Uh, yeah. Uh, we can see that you have a beautiful studio. How did you set up your studio space? And how important do you think setting up a studio space is? Um, well, it was very nice when David and I first met, he said to me, we could share a studio. And I said, look, darling, that'd be lovely, but I think we really need our own studios. <laughs> so we've got a studio. So David can tell you the rest. Well, yes. Um, over the years, we've actually uh, had our own separate space, but within the framework of the, the main studio. So... Um, when we came to live on Phillip Island, where we live now, uh, mm. which is about eight years now, um, mm. we decided to, to attach a new studio, build a studio like the house, so a studio gallery. And um, that, that has been fantastic. Mm. So we beat it, be, built that piecemeal so that we had storage for framing and everything else, but I had to have her space. And she's got a lock on the door. She can lock <laughs> me out. <laughs> My <And> God. <laughs> well, we, but we don't. We don't. We, we have a good um, way of always 
asking, can we come in? Can we please come in? And if you're very busy painting, you say, no, not right this minute. Not, it, not even if a snake bites you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could be right in the middle of a watch and someone wants to speak to you and you've lost it. <laughs> but uh, we, we share, we share mm -hmm. a common goal, like you do. Uh, and uh, I think the thing is that um, uh, you always look for the good things. You don't exactly. look for the You don't look for the... You look for the good first. Then if there's a question asked, you, you'll say, well, maybe that would have worked better. But you don't work on the other work, one's work. Oh, I so so. <laughs> so uh, we don't... Do uh, but, you know, like, basically, uh, it works very well. I know some relationships don't work that way, but... Well, I guess, know, it's good. for me, the most important thing was that it's never a competition. Oh, because yes. to me, Dad, just an amazing artist. And it was really important for me to find my own way. And so I never looked at it as, as a competition. And I just always concentrated on my own journey. That's yeah. great. That's great. Yeah. That's I want to know that what are the basic elements, according to you, sir, to make a perfect painting? Would like to know from <laughs> both of you, but first from David, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what, 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 according to you, are the elements that make a perfect painting? Uh -huh. yes, that's, you are a very senior artist and the, this question is a very yeah, important question for, for all the youngsters, yeah. all the, you know, art lovers. They, this is the best question, I think, in this, all the talk. Yeah, well, uh, you know, like, for me, uh, what makes a great painting um, is, I suppose, the, the feeling that, and the inspiration and the, and the feeling that you see something that you want to really actually um, put your heart and soul into. Uh, to me, that's what makes a great painting, when you actually yeah. feel something here that touches you. Uh, and wow. so all people that uh, say, oh, I want to be a great painter, and I'll be a great artist. Uh, if you put that in front of uh, feelings, um, yes. that it will stop, stop, stop that happening. So, to me, having the desire and uh, like just things that happen to you in life, uh, sometimes they're only very fleeting. And uh, when you actually uh, remember that, and you you actually record it in your work or you what you're doing. Uh, it's bringing it all back again and it's kind of like a, a spirit that moves you, you know. So mm -hmm. the spirit moving the artist is the thing that makes it really work, you know. And uh, my advice to an artist today uh, starting out, you know, um, uh, it, it, there are traps for the people uh, starting in this way is that um, people think, oh, so some people will say to you, oh, you paint? Oh, that's interesting. How long do you take? Oh, you might only take uh, an hour or something to do a very nice work. And they think, that must be easy. So we'll do it. <laughs> it's not about it. It's about how much you put, how much time and you want to yeah. put into it to explore um, your feelings as well. So it never worried me to do something over and over and over till I got what I needed from it. So it, 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 uh, it's a constant uh, thing that uh, a desire, like playing guitar, like lots of other things in art. So um, that's my advice to people today. Uh, the feelings, paint your feelings, paint your heart. Don't get trapped into saying, somebody will say to you, uh, well, the trend now is to paint like this, you see? So uh, you've got to be careful because uh, people get caught up in either trends or trying to be over successful instead of painting their true feelings. Right. So, uh, anyway, I hope I haven't been too long with that, but I, I just had to, had to say that. Yeah. No, no, no. no it's, it's, it's a lesson. It's, it's really great, yes. Um, mm. maybe and, and, and what do you think, Dynamite Wild? 
What do I think about a perfect painting? <laughs> well, probably to start with, I wouldn't think about a perfect painting. Um, I think, to me, painting is a it's, a... it's definitely a spiritual connection. And I think oh. that when you learn your craft and you put into practice your... And, your passion and your feelings for what you're doing, sometimes that wonderful painting just happens. I right. don't cool. think it's anything that I ever strive to do. Yes. I think it's, it is a happening when you're in the zone and you might do the same subject a few times or you might, and it might never be successful. And then you do something else and it just happens. So... It's not a, ever a striving for a perfect painting. But it's always for what's the truth and what's the feeling. So what, according to you, are the best qualities of Dinah, ma'am? And what, according to you, are the best qualities of David, sir, as a human, <laughs> as a painter? I mean, yeah. yeah. You can go first. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I have to say, uh, with Diana, um, we, we had this conversation a long, long time ago when I first met her. I said, um, you know, we have so many similarities in so many ways and so many connections. With it was frightening. It, it was <laughs> frightening. And I said, whatever we do together will be doubly done because uh, we are very similar in some in so many ways and yeah. some people say similar people don't attract well we 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 know we get inspiration from each other and die um she's wonderful she's been wonderful and um you know she's been just a, a a real um special person not only as a as an artist but as a as a person in my life so um I feel that uh, we have a great connection with the same thought thought process, and um, yeah, well, if you didn't have that, you'd miss it. Uh, I think um, some people together, as uh, some people together, working together, um, sure. they feel competition. And it's not. Um, we share, and, and we share the love, and, and we share the, the good moments and the down moments. So. Um, I'm very grateful for Di in my life uh, for her contribution and her great painting, and um, it's wonderful to see. Uh, not only that, I, I just think, um, yeah, I think uh, it's uh, you have to stop and pinch yourself to see occasionally, uh, you know, the reality of it all. But you know, you do. Everyone has their good, and bad times, but. Um, Mostly, I would say everything's good. Yeah. Well, yes, I guess. Well, with David, I've always had so much admiration for him as an artist and also his ability to be so giving to everybody in the art, art world that has, you know, followed him as an artist and has learned from him. I think that generosity of spirit is something that's such a mark of David and something I admire so uh, besides the fact that he's an amazing painter and an, and an amazing teacher, which is something that's quite rare, I think. Right. Um, right. And he's a, a wonderful human being. He's um, just a wonderful yeah. human being. Most of the time, he's wonderful to be with. <laughs> <laughs> wow. um, yeah. So we, I can honestly say we never, we never have any arguments about art. That's one good thing. <laughs> we sometimes have a few arguments, but not about art. Um, yeah, so I think we're very blessed to be able to do what we do together and we support each other in so many different ways that oh. to achieve that on your own would be very difficult. Yeah. And we've been super blessed to be able to travel together. Um, I, I, you know, yeah, David's generosity and spirit's the thing that's sort of the, to me, is the, is the big mark of what what contribution he's made to the world of art. Yeah, that's great. I, I just to add a little <laughs> bit to that is that um, you know one of the things and yourselves, uh, you know, to sharing a, a great 
passion there as well, probably understand this, that uh, when you go out to paint together, it's, um, it's special because you can um, share a moment, you know, uh, and you don't, you're not having to say, well, have you finished yet? Or uh, when's that going to stop? Or it's a kind of a sharing moment as well. And in, in this time of lockdown and coronavirus and, and yeah. areas like that, uh, we're very fortunate that we can even take it inside. Even though we go out to paint, we can take it inside. We've got this special uh, ability to be able to do that. We're, we're very lucky. And, uh, yeah. We feel very blessed at the moment when so many people are locked in and they're, <clears throat> they're frustrated, they're bored. Um, and I think sure, that really. what's great about it is that it keeps you in the heart and when you're in the heart, you're not in fear. And I think that's one of the very big uh, blessings of painting is that when we paint from our hearts, we, we're not fearful of all the things that could happen, which at exactly the moment is like great. Oh, a lot of things could happen. So I just think that's a, a contribution that all artists have to, to the world really is to keep that spirit of vibration high and that helps others. Right. So, absolutely right. Art is a blessing, yes. Right, yeah. right. Um, what, is, what kind of major differences do you see in the uh, works of the artist all these years? I mean, who are your favorite painters of the past? And who do you think are your favorite painters now? And what is the difference in the thinking process you feel? Mm. Is there? Uh, yeah. Um, well, you know, I think uh, the, the painters of the past had a big influence on many of the watercolorists today. And uh, Australia is a small country. And, uh, but I think uh, we still, those people that were interested in watercolour painting uh, and even other forms of painting were very interested in the Impressionist school of painting in, uh, in Australia, which was a lot of oil painting as well. But they, the Australian Impressionists went across to France and uh, they came back and their, their work was free and had a certain freedom, certain element to it. And, mm -hmm. and I think was expressed in Sir Arthur Streeton's work, uh, who is a, a well known for his oil, but also for his watercolour. And, um, you know, when you see it in the National Gallery, it was very inspiring. And yeah. uh, so there were people like Hans Heysen, who came from Germany to Australia, who um, was Lutheran, and, uh, but he had a great influence on, on the Australian. Uh, landscape with the eucalypts, the gum trees. Okay. Uh, big experience on that. He was very... So these people set their paths, but uh, as you learn, you start to look at other forms of watercolour and mm. you see from other parts of the world. Uh, so I also think of the school of John Singer Sargent, you know, who, oh, yeah. to me, really? uh, you <laughs> couldn't leave him out because... Uh, expressed everyone's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> all that, all that well, favorite. Well, day, yeah. you know, so much so, so yeah. much so that um, even today, I mean, I won't. Uh, I I show my students uh, how he would go on about certain things, uh, and I kept those. And and when I was actually doing that, I could feel him in the room. It was quite <laughs> amazing. But uh, I was inspired by Sergeant. But also uh, other people like Harold Herbert, who was an Australian oh. form of sergeant. He was like sergeant, but in a different way. Uh, so I guess, you know, when I was travelling and going through the gallery scene in Europe and in France and through the Louvre and different, looking at different works, oh. I was inspired by the people that um, really made a mark like Sargent, you know, like uh, all the people that use colour. So I was really Im impressed by the colour. You know, a lot of the early works were done in a room and it was dark. And but mm. the, the people that painted from life, it was bright and, and colourful. So, um, 
uh, I was inspired by that, like Monet in the oil side. Yes, yeah, 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 really. All the Impressionists, yeah. 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 So there were, the Impressionists had a big inspiration. Exactly. Uh, so I suppose I still refer my watercolour to watercolour Impressionism. Uh, and the abstraction of that is it's not what you put in, it's what you leave out. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, I think that that is important. But um, the change today, to answer the full question, the changes that you see today is I think people are using more colour. There's more variety probably in the watercolour. You know, mm. you see uh, variation in in so many ways with the watercolour today. Right. And, and the, the, the advancement to me is seeing the watercolour used where they're exploring uh, the magic that it can achieve by not forcing it. And so uh, the, the pure form of creativity that comes from the watercolour. In the past, it was always fairly light and very... Um, or it was used for uh, studying oil, but uh, it was probably a little paler. I think today you see the watercolour vibrant and powerful. And so uh, I guess yes. right. a lot of big... Yeah. And, and what about you, Dana? Well, I guess my first inspirations probably were oil and watercolour, but certainly um, oil painting was my first love. And... Okay. I love the French Impressionists and also the Heidelberg School of Australia, which was the Impressionist School of, of Australia. Mm -hmm. um, I had a wonderful teacher, Max Meldrum, a student who, Ron, whose name was Ron Crawford. And so I had very good tonal training in oil painting, in portraiture and in still life, mm -hmm. which I did for many years, uh, part-time, but I was very dedicated and at holidays I used to go and do plein air painting and I painted with my girlfriend plein air out on the streets of Melbourne. Um, I love Richard Schmidt, which is the American oil painter. Yes. Yes. Absolutely yes. adore yes. his work. <laughs> and I loved his figures and yeah, all his amazing. works. Just amazing, yes. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I had a great collection of, of books of J.J. Hilder, um, uh, lots of watercolourists that I mm -hmm. love. So that watercolour thing was always there. And matter of fact, when David and I met, we actually mm. had so many of the same books, mm. which was quite amazing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's so many artists I could mention, but I think as far as how things have changed, I think the internet's made a huge difference. Exactly. It's yes. changed in the world of art at the moment. Yes. And there are so many more people painting. And I think the internet's actually opened up uh, a world of art that people can explore that wouldn't have been available to them beforehand. So, so uh, what message both of you would like to give to the young, inspiring, uh, you know, artists? Well, <laughs> uh, my message to young people painting today is um, try to um, get hold of all your friends uh, that are interested in <laughs> doing something outside, taking, their, taking your pencils, your, I don't know how young you have, you can be start very young, but I always think if you can um, take all your creative skills, go outside mm. and explore and work from nature and share the moment. Absolutely. You know, because, um, you know, there's so much fun and life that comes from sharing. And, uh, 
or sharing that experience or experience. The thing about painting, that if I can just say this, um, is the most important because I paint a lot outside uh, and you do also, days, I, I saw, um, uh, you, you get so much from doing just, that. Uh, you know, with within the studio, the internet and it's, it's good now, want to go right outside. now, but when Actually, you get the opportunity to go out for them. and so paint I think from life your message, and nature uh, and from experience, that's what I would encourage young people to do because I know in China, and you've believe probably seen it. Um, drawings, all families go out uh, rather than starting with the paints, you know. Yeah, I mean, and, I totally um, agree that um, plein air painting is a wonderful teacher, but I think you have to learn your craft. I mean, it's all right to go, it's, it's wonderful to go outside and paint, but you really do need to learn either from a teacher or from, from books or from videos because until you learn your craft, mm. it's very hard to put any expression into what you're doing without some knowledge. So I think it's really important to get some knowledge first and that's really why workshops and teaching are so popular. Um, I think that once you have some, some skills and knowledge, then it's up to you then to try to find your own voice and your own expression. But that's very hard to find if you haven't got any, any, any craft behind you, any knowledge. So I think that's terribly important. Yes, that's great. That's great. Yeah. I think it was a truly enriching experience for me. I will remember it. Thank for you me also, so Mina, much, for me also. Uh, Diana, ma'am. Thank you so <laughs> much, David, sir. It was really wonderful to have you here. And uh, oh. this thing, I think, will remain with me forever. Yes. yes. Uh, well, <laughs> it, it was very special to get this because we were a little bit unsure whether it was going to work because our Wi-Fi thought we thought it might drop out. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, this uh, experience, uh, when things are so tough now, uh, to you and the rest of the world, uh, we're so grateful. And all we can say is we send our love and best wishes to everybody in these situations. Absolutely. And thank you very much. And so much. It, so it, was, it was really lovely talking with you and uh, very, very inspiring, you know, uh, your stories and, you know, your lessons. Definitely youngsters and all the budding artists will going to see your views and they will definitely learn more and more. Thank you so much. I think you all must have enjoyed this episode with David Sauer and Diana Ma. We will keep coming with more interesting episodes and more information. Till then, take care and goodbye. Thank you everyone and see you soon with more masters. Okay. Bye-bye.